YouTube, it's Nerdcat, um, and so this is another Friday video. Um, as you can see, completely blank walls, and no, I am not in a sale asylum. It is the last day of, uh, my junior year in college. Yay! So I'll be going home tomorrow, so everything's all packed and completely creepy psych ward right now, but you know. So excited to go home. So anyway, today's episode is about one of my favorite cult uh, superheroes, if you can call her that. She, um, most people don't actually know who this is, but I think she needs a video because most people don't make ones for her. So this week's video is about Stripperella. Yes, you heard right. So. In case you didn't know, Stripperella was an adult animated series created by Stan Lee. And, oops, sorry. Uh, and it's about a stripper named Erotica Jones, who is secretly a superhero, well, heroine, and slash secret agent named Stripperella. Yeah, I got your attention now, didn't I? So, its genre is superhero science fiction. And Stripperella's voice is Pamela Anderson. Can this show get any better? And it does. Um, there's only 13 episodes. And I, uh, and you know what? I'll make this a two-part episode. So I'll tell you about why it gets cancelled in the next part. Um, and it was put on by The Firm and Network Enterprise. It was originally shown on Spike. And was released June 26th. 23, uh, 20, oh, wow, 2003, sorry, wow, so you're saying 2015, um, and it ran until April 1st of 2004. So, here's some background about Stripperella. Stripperella's powers include enhanced ref uh, reflexes and senses, an astonishing intelligence, you know, gotta make it smart, uh, superhero strength, jumping extremely high, sexy martial arts, and killer moves. Yeah, because she can't just have regular martial arts. No, she has to have sexy martial arts. Um, she has twice claimed in the episodes that she is impervious to all temperatures and weather conditions. Um, but you only see this, like, maybe a few times on screen. Um, and she generally has access to a number of Bond-esque uh, super technology that usually is questionable about its functions. <laughs> um, she is also able to use her extravagant blonde hair as an accept acceptive, oh, sorry, effective parachute. Now, with that, there were two, there was a problem with me. With the stripper, it was, um, in the first couple of episodes and the last couple of episodes, it's a completely different animated series. Like, the format is completely different, so for people who don't like when formats change, this will bother you. There are some other things, which I'll go into. Um, but also in the first couple of episodes, you don't see Stripperella as, like, a superhuman type person with, like, blonde hair that becomes a parachute, and all the other things that you see in the newer version. But it's all one season. So just watch out for that if you check her out, which I highly recommend you do, because it's hilarious. Um, continuing on. Uh, she has a brother um, named Chipperella, um, and he also was a hipster, um, hipster, <laughs> stripper... Uh, superhero secret agent thing, like, uh, Stripperella is. Um, he's only mentioned, like, briefly when Stripperella, in one episode, uh, spoilers, Stripperella loses her confidence in her, uh, crime fighting, and after she is shrunken by one of the villains, Small Fry. Yeah. Um... He appears in a flashback as a hulky blonde and is affectionately referred to by Erotica and Chief Stroganoff as Chip. Um, 
Also, in that episode, in a humorous anecdote, Stroganoff tells Stripperella that her brother's memory was erased, later being mostly restored, except for the word quit, which was forever erased from his memory. So he never knows the word quit. Nicely done, Stanley. Nicely done. Um, moving on. Stripperella debuted on Spike TV in the spring of 2003 and lasted one season with 13 episodes. Anderson uh, described it as not being a raunchy show despite obvious double entendres and topless nudity, which was blurred on Spike. She didn't think it was raunchy. It's, I mean, yeah, there's sex jokes and uh, obvious sexual contact, but it's actually just a funny, funny show to watch because the comedy is just so, like, tongue-in-cheek, and it's fantastic. Um, like I said, the anime st animation style changed halfway through the show. Um, it became brighter and revamping the looks of many of the show's major characters. Stripperella, for example, was now drawn with Cal... What was it? Cal? Having a uh, Cal, which uh, having larger eye holes, similar to Batgirl's uh, draw animation style. Um, and the fellow stripper Persephone, Persephone, whatever, now had darker complexion and her accent changed from episode to episode. So watch out for that if you're going to check out Stripperella. That's another thing that bothered me, but like it didn't turn me off the show. I still watched every episode. Like, still fantastic either way. But just to let you know. Um, what else? So, and now I'm just going to tell you a few of the villains and then I'll leave some of the rest of the stuff for the next video. So, some of Stripperella's villains are <laughs> Dr. Serarian, who in one episode, he only showed, like, a lot of the villains only show up like once. So, Dr. Serarian was one of the one-time villains. Um, he gave women plastic surgery, and then with, uh, in explosive, or, no, not explosive, um, fat-growing implants. So, when they had them, they blew up into chippy girls, which, oh my god, life is over! Really amusing. That's the first episode. Um, there's Klinko, who photocopies people, who runs a photocopier with a machine that brainwashes people to do shit. <laughs> uh, Molly Limpkin, another small character. Small Fry, who is a munchkin. That's what they call him in the whole thing. And he has a ray that makes people smaller. He's amusing. Um, then some of the villains that reappear are some of my favorites. Uh, Cheapo, who um, is the world's cheapest bad guy. Then there's Queen Clitoris, and she is a woman who lashes out on society for her facial appearance. Yeah. And my favorite, Pushy Galore, or Octo Pushy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she is seen in one episode where she's like a telemarketer kind of person, or the TV marketing people. And she's also, she runs this, pretty much she's a slave driver. Um, literally, she has orphaned children working in a sweatshop. She genetically mutated animals to look like, the, have the logos of famous brands on them. And also, she would marry men and then use their skin for her products. Like handbags and stuff. Yeah. She also, as her name Octopushy <laughs> implies, she has eight arms. Yeah. These are the supervillains that I love because they are just so corny. Oh, uh, just so corny. But I will leave that for right now because I have a lot of packing still to do and I have more to say about Stripperella. So... This is part one. I will put up part two next Friday. And I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I'm enjoying making them. And until uh, until next time, 
Uh, stay nerdy, my friends. Later.